Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mandy Whipple. I'm a cognitive psychology PhD student at Northwestern University at Belmore. Um, and today I'm here to talk to you about overconfidence. Now, I think all of us here can think of someone that we know of as overconfident. Maybe it's the student that we sit next to in class and they continually raise their hand and give the wrong answer every single time. <laughs> and yet they keep doing it, they keep raising their hand. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe it's our anti-vaxxer aunt who sits at the Thanksgiving table and tells us all about how vaccines cause autism, which of course we should all know is incorrect, or hope we all know. Um, <laughs> and so what I would really like to do today is to talk about what overconfidence is, uh, how we become overconfident, and what we can do about it. And by the end of this presentation, you should be able to answer this question. What happens when you think you know more than you actually do? So first I'd like to cover what overconfidence is. Uh, is it the anti-vaxxer ant? Is it the person that raises their hand? Is it a personality trait, like many of us think it is, like pridefulness or narcissism? Uh, turns out it's none of these things. Uh, overconfidence is essentially when we think we know more than we actually do. And by the definition, it is not only a personality trait that we can attribute to somebody, but it is something that all of us are capable of doing. So, I want to talk about why overconfidence is so important now. Uh, one of the reasons is overclaiming. And overclaiming is essentially when we claim to have knowledge that we don't actually have or that doesn't exist. Another one is that it encourages us to believe false information. When we hold very little accurate knowledge about a topic, we will go online, for example, and we'll see something about it that's not right, and because we don't have the prior knowledge to inform us that, hey, maybe we shouldn't believe this, but we have the confidence to tell us, ah, oh, yeah, you got it. <laughs> but we're gonna believe false information more. We're more likely to hit that like button or share. And both of these point to a really important aspect. I'm sorry. <laughs> The most important, um, uh, the most important repercussion, I'm sorry, of overconfidence is that it helps us make bad decisions. And I have to throw the unhappy face up here because of the anti-vaxxer ant, right? So we have this person who has very, very little accurate knowledge about vaccinations, who has a lot of confidence in what they know, and that leads her to do things like, I don't know, not vaccinate her kids, and they end up with measles or whooping cough, things that we have solutions for. So next I'd like to talk about uh, what makes us overconfident and what we know. Uh, just like there's a lot of things that makes us, or that uh, overconfidence causes us to do, there's a lot of things that causes us to become overconfident. Uh, one of those things is how interesting a topic is. So when I, I don't know, for this presentation, for example, if you're very interested in this, <laughs> this is gonna make you feel like, yeah, you know, I got this, this is great. Um, but in reality, you haven't learned very much at all. You're mistaking the fact that you're interested in something for learning. And another thing is, can't read backwards, sorry, being able to search for things on the internet. So if I have a question about something and I go on the internet and I say, oh yeah, I'm going to look up stuff about vaccinations, right? Because I engaged in actually searching for the information, I'm going to think I learned a lot more than I did. And that's going to make me overconfident. Now, both of these things point to a very important aspect to overconfidence, and that's learning new things. When we learn new things, and especially when we know very little about the new things that we're learning, that is when we're the most overconfident. So that means that when we read things like Wikipedia articles, introductory articles to things, that is when we become most overconfident in what we know. So, now what? <laughs> I've told you all about what overconfidence causes us to do, and what causes us to become overconfident. Now I might be wondering, what do I do about it? Now I know all this stuff, and I'm an expert in overconfidence. <laughs> what do I do about it? Um, I don't have great answers for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, researchers are still figuring it out. This is part of what I'm doing. I'm trying to find solutions to what we can do about the overconfidence problem. <laughs> and part of why it's so difficult is because lots of things make us overconfident, and lots of things overconfidence causes us to do a lot of things. That means there's lots of problems that have lots of potential solutions. And that makes my job very hard. <laughs> so, but we're about uh, One thing, here's the saving grace that I have found, or that I have found, I'm sorry, we've all found, uh, through money or other things, is 
is um, evaluative mindsets. And this evaluative mindsets are essentially when we really dig deep into what we're, we're reading about or the information that we're absorbing. We think a lot about what am I reading? Does it line up with prior knowledge that I have? Uh, does this line up with other things that I know? Have I considered the fact that this might be untrue? It, it's really a mindset that you can really think deeply about what you're, you're thinking about and learning about. And that's been shown to reduce overconfidence because it really starts to show us, oh, this is like actually what I know, <laughs> not what I thought I knew. And so I'd really like to leave everyone here today with some tips, some few great useful tips to help give you this evaluative mindset. So one of them is to try to hold an evaluative mindset uh, while learning something new. That could look like asking yourself questions while you're reading or taking a moment after you're done reading to think about what you just learned and generate new questions or uh, think about different things that you've absorbed as you read and compare it to what you knew before. <sighs> Another thing is to consider what evidence you have of the claim. So because of confidence causes us to believe false information at higher rates, it's important to consider the fact that something may be false. <laughs> and you should go on Google and you should activate those searching skills and you should try and find other sources that tell you the same thing because that's more likely to be true. You're finding more reputable sources that show you that this thing is true. And so I'd like to leave every day, everybody today with a challenge, which is the next time you read a web article like the news or Wikipedia, and you're wondering, do vaccines cause autism? <laughs> um, I want everyone to try and hold this evaluative mindset or to take a few moments to just really consider this presentation. Thank you.